Welcome to Kit's Rock Review. It is November 15th, and I've got some good news for you, and I've got some bad news for you. But we'll start with the bad news and get it out of the way. If you haven't been following Kit's Rock Review, you've been missing out on my tribute to the band Genesis. For the last 14 days, I've been talking about Genesis. You've missed out on me talking about the song Turn It On Again, about Firth of Fifth, Dodo Lurker, Watcher of the Skies, Domino. You've even missed out on me talking about Follow You, Follow Me. But there are two things of good news for you. One, all the videos are on Facebook and YouTube, so you can listen to me talk about those songs. Just search for Kids Rock Review, go back, and you'll hear my, all my every day that I've been doing this Genesis uh, tribute. The other thing, number two, is we still got half a month left. So, and I still got some more, I still got a lot of stuff to talk about. So you can hear me talk about Wind and Wuthering, Trespass, We Can't Dance. I even may talk about some of the Genesis Live albums or some of their B-sides and rarities. So, stay tuned the rest of the month for all of that stuff. You can never get too much Genesis, can you? No. But today what I'm going to talk to you about is I'm going to talk to you about my favorite solo songs by the five classic members of 70s Genesis. So, we will start with my favorite song from Peter Gabriel. Now, most people, their favorite Peter Gabriel solo song comes from his album, So. So is my favorite album. However, my favorite Peter Gabriel album is not on So. My favorite Peter Gabriel solo song comes from his 1980 album, which is called Peter Gabriel, like most of his early solo albums are called. But the 1980 album is nicknamed Melt because on the cover, his face is starting to melt. That song is Games Without Frontiers. It was fairly popular when it was out, when I was a kid. Um, it's based on a European... TV show, a European game show, in which villages across Europe would compete in games of skill, and they'd dress up in these silly costumes, which, you know, hey, that's a lyric in the song. And in Britain, the song was called, it's a, or the song, the show was called, It's a Knockout, which is another lyric in the song. So it's actually based on a show that Peter Gabriel had watched. Now, the song itself opens with a slide guitar, followed by an acoustic guitar, and then there's some electronic percussion and a synth bass. And AllMusic.com, which is an online review uh, site, they say that this combination of instruments creates a dark sonic environment. And that's one of the things people like about it, is that dark sonic environment. So that's my favorite Peter Gabriel solo song, uh, Games Without Frontiers. We'll move on to Phil Collins, uh, my favorite Phil Collins solo song. And once again, my favorite Phil Collins solo song does not come from my favorite Phil Collins solo album. My favorite Phil Collins solo album is No Jackets Required. Remember, I was a teenager in the mid-80s, so all that, it was everywhere. You know, you heard it, you liked it, it, it was just everywhere, and it was infectious, that, that pop stuff that uh, Phil Collins was doing. And it's still a good album, don't get me wrong, but my favorite uh, Phil Collins' solo song comes from Hello, I Must Be Going. Um, it is I Don't Care Anymore. It's a very dark song, and I think what makes it so dark is the drums that are on the song. And that drum sound, for those of you who are not musicians, is called a gated reverb, which means they don't use the cymbals when they play the drums. And Phil Collins actually came up with that with Peter Gabriel's help when they were recording uh, Peter Gabriel's solo song called The Intruder. And it just, it's an amazing, I love the drums on that song. It's what, it, what's, it, it is what makes it my favorite Phil Collins solo song. And I was actually disappointed when I saw Phil Collins uh, solo for the first time in that he didn't play I Don't Care Anymore. I was just so disappointed because I thought, how can he not play it? Anyway, let's move on. We're gonna move on to Mike Rutherford and his solo band, Mike and the Mechanics, and my favorite Mike and the Mechanics slash Mike Rutherford solo song is actually the first Mike and the Mechanics single, Silent Running on Dangerous Ground. 
it was originally just going to be called Silent Running, but then it got put into a movie called On Dangerous Ground, so they added that to the uh, title. It was actually not called On Dangerous Ground when it was released in the U.S. It was like Coyote Canyon or something like that. But anyway, the song was written by Mike Rutherford and a Scottish musician named B.A. Robertson, and it was like one of the first songs they wrote together. They were just uh, seeing what, what, what would happen if they wrote a song together, and that was one of the first songs that uh, they wrote. It may have been the first song. And the Mike and the Mechanics producer heard the song, and he's like, you have to put that on the album, and that has to be the first single. And I like the song. It has this sci-fi vibe feel to it. I consider it an 80s prog rock song. And, of course, how can anyone not like a song that's sung by Paul Carrick? So, you know, hey, it's my favorite uh, Mike Rutherford slash Mike and the Mechanics solo song. But let's move on to Tony Banks. I've always felt sorry for Tony Banks because he's had the least successful solo career of any of the members of Genesis, yet he is responsible for more of the sound of Genesis than anybody. I mean, his keyboards are Genesis. I mean, what would Genesis be like without Tony Banks' keyboard solo that opens Firth of Fifth? What would Genesis be like without the, the, the that, that haunting keyboard uh, in Tonight, Tonight, Tonight? But his solo career hasn't really taken off. Part of the problem is he's not a really great singer. And he, even Tony Banks has admitted you really need to be a better singer than he is to have a, a strong solo career. He's tried on his album, some of his albums, to have other people sing the songs. He's even tried forming a Mike and the Mechanic style band to uh, do his solo work, such as his solo band in the late 80s and early 90s was called Bank Statement, which was... he was. And he admits he was trying to do the Mike and the Mechanics thing. Um, he's tried his hand at uh, movie soundtracks. And right now, he's actually being pretty successful being a uh, classical music composer. But my favorite Tony Banks solo album is this one. It's called The Fugitive from 1983. And this is the only Tony Banks solo album where he sings all the lead vocals on it. And I don't think his vocals on this are, I mean, they're not great, but they're not bad. They're sort of John Lennon-ish, I guess, uh, is how I would describe them. I mean, it doesn't have the range of John Lennon, but they're not bad. My favorite song on this album is called And the Wheels Keep Turning. And it reminds me of an early 80s Genesis song. It could have fit on Abacab or Duke or even on the fourth sides of Three Sides Live. It would have, would have fit on there. So I urge you, you know, if you can find this on a streaming service, look up Tony Banks, The Fugitive. Buy the CD or the album if you can find it as well. So we're going to go on now to Steve Hackett. He's probably the least well-known of the classic members of Genesis. And the song that I, my favorite Steve Hackett song is actually probably, is the most recent song that I'm talking about tonight. It comes from, believe it or not, his 2017 album, called The Night Siren, and the song is 50 Miles from the North Pole, and this album in general, and that song in particular, reminds me of uh, mid-70s Genesis. Steve Hackett's probably the only member of the band that's still making music that has that mid-70s Genesis sound, which is why I really like the album and the song. And I urge you, if you like, if you're a fan of mid-70s Genesis, to get The Night Siren uh, album. There's one other uh, member of Genesis, uh, Anthony Phillips. He was the guitarist for Genesis when they were at Charterhouse School. He was their guitarist on the From Genesis to Revelation album, and he was on uh, the Trespass album. He left fairly early in the band's history, and he's actually done a fair number of solo albums. I'm not too familiar with him to recommend any of those songs, to really have a favorite, but I urge you, if you are a fan of Genesis, to try to find... Some of his material, it's on uh, Spotify, it's probably on Amazon Music, it's probably on Apple. Um, so just look up Anthony Phillips and see what he sounds like. Okay, so all the songs I talked about, I'm going to put their videos in the comments later. I want to know what you think. Is there a favorite Genesis solo song of yours that you would like, that you like, that you want to tell me about? Anyway, tell me about that in the comments, watch the videos, and until next time, keep on rocking in the free world.